Are you impressed with the Bucks or disappointed in the Packers? Oh, certainly impressed with the Bucks. Um, it's interesting when you look at this, you only got one side or the other to pick in this binary conversation. And I don't understand how anyone could be disappointed in the Packers more so than impressed with the Bucks. Let's just talk about who the Tampa Bay Bucks are. Tampa Bay Bucks haven't been to the playoffs since 2007. Tampa Bay Bucks have had eight of their last nine se seasons ending with a losing record. And then Tom Brady just shows up and starts violating city codes and going to parks and working out with his teammates and having virtual Zoom meetings to learn the playbook in a new system with a coach who has never won before. And then he takes his show on the road in the playoffs and has three straight road victories with a team that was a losing team just last year. And more importantly... Not only does he go on the road and finally gets a victory in Lambeau Field when everyone was talking about finally Aaron Rodgers and the number one seed favorite Green Bay Packers were at home, but he slayed that dragon as well. He did. And then you talk about not only slaying that dragon, but the dragon saw him coming. They beat the Green Bay Packers by 28 points in week six. So none of this, and Aaron Rodgers kept saying, oh, that was back then, that was an anomaly. I kept warning you, okay, you better take ownership of this. Not only did he beat them in the game, but he was up 18 points in the third quarter on this same team, on the road, impressive. But that's easy to quantify. I just gave you the numbers conversation. Let me give it to you in a way, in terms of intangibles, in terms of immeasurables. Because we're football players, and we know one thing that fans don't understand about the game is the severity and level of violence that occurs. And I didn't know it either because I started playing football when I was seven. So it, 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 all my impressionable years is just playing a violent sport. I don't know what normal layman's feel on a day-to-day. -day. <laughs> Since seven years old to the age of 32, I've been about these pads, Okay. <laughs> Let me talk about the pads I saw yesterday. And you have to see it. And if you have experience, then you feel it. Let's talk about how those pads were out there thumping yesterday, thundering, mm. to the point where we saw it in the New Orleans Saints game, but it wasn't really a, a, a point to highlight. Let's highlight it now. When those pads are thumping, like Mike Tyson said, everybody got a plan until they get smacked in the mouth. mouth. Talk about it. When those pads start thumping, Aaron Jones, his chest was broken. And he's... He lost the ball, forced fumble. When those pads start dumping, sure-handed Devontae Adams was out there, oh, my God, dropping a touchdown pass and spazzing on the sidelines because those pads were dumping. When those pads start dumping, Aaron Rodgers got sacked five times and threw a costly interception. When those pads start dumping, you know what I saw? I saw a team lose its way. This team turned into a pure drop-back passing team when they've been a play-action passing team for the last two years. They forgot how to even play Green Bay Packers football to the point where the post-game press conference, what did Matt LaFleur say? I had a bad day. You know why? Because those pads will make you have a bad day. So I'm impressed by the Bucks, by the numbers, but also by the experience. They were putting hands on people. Big Dog, last week I came up here and I didn't give the winning teams very much credit. I was disappointed okay. in the losing teams. I'm changing that mantra this time around. I'm impressed by the Bucks. Yes. And I'm impressed by the Bucks because in football for y'all at home, as an offense, you can either attack a defensive scheme or you can attack defensive players. There are two options. Uh -huh. Attack the scheme or attack the players. The Buccaneers' offense was so impressive because they found the weak links as players. The mm. Buccaneers' defense was impressive because they found the weak links as players. David Bakhtiari, he got hurt in practice, starting left tackle for the Packers, all pro left tackle. He got hurt in practice about a month ago. So what do the Buccaneers do? Well, you know what? Last time we played the Packers, we brought a ton of pressure. We brought pressure 46% of the time. We needed extra men to get to Aaron Rodgers. But wait a second. This all-pro left tackle's out. We're just going to win with Shaq Barrett. We're just going to mm. win with JPP. We're not going to bring pressure as often because we don't need to. We're not going to beat you or attack your scheme. We're going to attack your men winning at left tackle, beating the left tackle. Okay, offensively, the Buccaneers, I was so impressed with them because they said, wait, we're not going to attack your defense scheme Packers, we're going to attack anybody not named Jair Alexander in the secondary. <laughs> so, Kevin King, you about to get this work. And Kevin King, he got that work. So, I can't be disappointed in the Packers collectively. Now, 
I can be disappointed in Darnell Savage's safety for the Packers. You misplay a ball, Chris Godwin gets a 52-yard gain on third and nine. I can be disappointed in Kevin King, I think a first or second round pick just a few years back, getting beat by Scotty Miller, a sixth round pick out of Bowling Green. Like, you can't let that happen specifically and particularly to end the half. Most important times of games at the end of halves and at the end of the game itself. Can't let that happen. Disappointed in individuals, but overall, collectively, I'm impressed by the Buccaneers. Well, let's bring in a former yes. Packer, Greg Jennings, NFL analyst. Finally. So, Greg, you let us know. Are you impressed with the Bucs or were you disappointed in the Packers? <laughs> uh, can I be 100% Please? real? Because that's Finally. what I am. Finally. Uh, both. <laughs> I was both. And I know y'all going to be like, you got to pick one. I was disappointed because <laughs> my heart was with the Packers. I thought this was the year. Mm -hmm. And their performance showed me that a, a lot. Number one, uh, all year long, they were able to scheme up ways to get Devontae Adams open and keep him involved to a, to a degree of where he impacted the game. He had so little impact, it was drastically impactful on their own <laughs> offense because you saw Aaron Rodgers just not even look at him in crucial situations. When they had the free play and he's running down the field wide open, who do we typically see Aaron Rodgers look to? Devontae Adams, and I get it. You start nitpicking and you see the fourth down, and but the third down was crucial because Aaron Rodgers, typically I'm thinking, just run, mm -hmm. run. Mm -hmm. you, you got it, run. So my heart, my, my heartstrings, I was disappointed because I didn't see the Packers really do every single thing that they possibly could to win that game. But then I turn and look at the Bucs, and I'm impressed with them for all the reasons you guys mentioned. Tom Brady, the way he came out and played that game and executed in the crucial moments of the game, the two-minute windows, and then the others. And when I say others, I'm not talking about Shaq Barrett. I'm not talking hmm. about Devin White. I'm talking about the secondary, uh, Murphy Bunting. I'm talking about all hmm. Scotty Miller. They were, they, when their numbers were called, yes. as minimum as they, they were, were ready. they stepped up and they were ready. And that is a credit to coaching, Byron Leftwich, trusting. I'm talking, to, they went third and 10 to a young rookie. Johnson, like a young rookie, Brady trusts every man to a T on that roster to where it's like, okay, just call the play. I'll get it to the open guy. The open guy is young Tyro Johnson. Get it to him. Makes a play. End of the second half, right before the second half, is, uh, or I'm sorry, it's right before the second quarter is over, Scotty Miller, inside fade. I trust you. Go win. I'll put it where it needs to be. They make a play. And then Todd Bowles on the defensive side. Boy. I, I can't give him enough credit because he schematically eliminated Devontae Adams, and you could see it really disrupted what the Packers wanted to do. He also, I mean, these, but but the players, they have to do their part, and mm. they did. You talked about it, Marcellus. Them mm. pads were stumping. Dump. You saw the hit on Jamal Adams. You saw those hits on Aaron Jones. I mean, when your impact players get impacted to the point <laughs> to where they are no longer an impact, <laughs> that is That's that is not only scheme, That's a bar. but that is also them guys on the other side of the ball bringing that heat, too. That's yeah, real. man. Uh, look, Woo! you broke it down there. Um, first of all, Aaron Rodgers shouldn't have run on that play. Everyone keeps talking about Aaron Rodgers should have took off. I want you guys, like I did in a moment, because my naked eye, my football instincts, my football experience said, why is it Aaron Rodgers running this ball? Go back like I did in the game, pause it, rewind, and look again. And just look at Devin White. He was ready. De Devin White. Ready. Devin White said, go ahead, Aaron Rodgers. And Aaron Rodgers said, okay, I won't. And <laughs> that's all that was. I mean, look, I played against oh, Ray Lewis at times, and Doug Flutie used to run around in circles. And when we saw Ray Lewis, Doug Flutie didn't want to run the same way. So I think that was something that's a misnomer out there. That said, man, these Buccaneers found a way to win. Peep out some of these nuggets right here. One, they didn't even have Antoine Winfield Jr. in the secondary and still was able to have their way against Devontae Adams, only 67 receiving yards. And I played with Antoine Winfield Sr., so I understand those bloodlines in terms of greatness at that position. But the Buccaneers are the only team ever to play a conference championship game on the road, fewer yards, and 
fewer yards and fewer turnovers, more turnovers and fewer yards, sorry, and still win the game. Hold on now. So, <laughs> so, so wait a minute. 0 and 34 was the record of teams that went out there before them. And then they said, doesn't matter. We're going to find a way to get this done. Tom Brady, everybody keeps talking about, well, Aaron Rodgers outperformed him. Acho brought it up. Great point, except quarterbacks to throw three or more interceptions in the playoff game are 20 and 104. That's the other guys. You know what Tom Brady is? Three and one in those same games. Tom Brady just finds a way. Everybody can say, well, it's his defense. It's just not that simple, guys. I just told you. Hey, we have more turnovers. Hey, we have fewer yards. It's a different equation in terms of leadership. So if you look at them, when Devontae Adams can't ball, Aaron Jones had 27 yards and two fumbles. What the hell is this? Held the Packers to six points after three turnovers. Man, there's so much going on right here that you can't just say one thing, but overall, you're impressed by this whole Buccaneers roster. Correct. I am Marcellus. I get disappointed when people act out of character. You feel me? Like, okay. I get disappointed when people do things that I've never seen before. Remember last week, I was disappointed in the Saints and Drew Brees. Mm -hmm. Drew Brees, you don't ever throw three picks. Like, what are you doing? Offense, Saints, y'all have never turned the ball over four times all season. Y'all acting out of character. But the Packers, they didn't act out of character. I mean, yeah, gee, in theory, you're right about Devontae Adams, but he still had nine catches. Like, that's in character for Devontae Adams. Packers defense, they were atrocious, but through the first three weeks of the season this year, they were giving up the most yards per play. Through the first six weeks of the season, they were giving up the 10th most yards per play. Packers defense, we knew they were bad. They've been bad. Aaron Rodgers, 70% completion percentage yesterday, three touchdowns in character for him. Nothing thing the Packers truly did was out of their character. But what the Buccaneers did was go above <clears throat> and beyond in exceeding their character. We don't talk enough, Cell, about that Aaron Jones hit that knocked him out the game. You talked about it. G Man. talked about it. But remember, Aaron Jones, a top five running back in the National Football League, and he didn't just leave on his own fruition. Like, he didn't just leave because he wanted to. He got hit so hard that he was like, hey, man, <laughs> this body ain't, ain't going to do what it's going to do. Tap so out. for that reason and because we made such a big deal about the Buccaneers being intimidated by the weather, first possession of the game, nine plays, mm. touchdown. Oh. Buccaneers weren't scared of nothing. For that reason, I'm definitely impressed. Yeah, again, I I'm going to go to the side of being impressed with the Bucs and, and talk about their depth. And just from start to finish, all season long, we, we kind of questioned this team and, and because we've seen super teams get put together um, in this fashion. But what we haven't seen is a quarterback like Tom Brady that doesn't just beat you with his skill set, but he mentally prepared this team for this moment. Like a guy like Devin White or, or Levante David, but Devin White who gets snubbed in the Pro Bowl and you mm. hear the comment of, look, we don't play for that bowl. We play for a bigger bowl. Like, he was able to get them to see the bigger picture of why. And that was able – that allowed them to dig a little bit deeper to understand this one goal was more important than any individual agenda or any individual accolades that I could possibly get that were – that would set aside or remove us or derail us from getting to this one place. Tom Brady did that. That's what he brought to the table. Mm -hmm. Then the depth, the depth of this team has been impressive to me all year. Their ability to lose a guy, insert a guy. I mean, they, they, don't, they don't drop off. Like when we, A.B. didn't play, but mm. do we even, did it even matter? It didn't even matter. Do they feel like they missed A.B.? They're like, yeah, we missed A.B., but we know what we got. When you look at, you talked about Winfield Jr. not playing. Did they miss him? Do we know the caliber player he is? Yes. But when you trust your guys mm. and when everyone feels like, look, I'm that guy too, because of the guys you bring in that locker room, Antonio Brown, Rob Gronkowski, all year long being a just blocking tight end, and they use him in a, in a critical moment of the game where he's unselfish enough to say, you know what, I'll block all game. And then he gets a cr critical screen and they convert critical third downs in moments because of the lack, of the, I mean, because of the depth that they have in the just the buy-in of this team has been impressive to me all year. And this is why we're going to watch them in a couple weeks in the Super Bowl at home.
Yeah, I'm glad, Greg, you are saying exactly what I've been saying. And even in the last block about that trust, that belief. I mean, just be real. I know sometimes we get lost in the relative experience of the NFL. But don't forget, everybody in the NFL is a collection of all Americans and all conference players. Like, everybody can play football in the NFL. But then when you get to the NFL level, you go against grown men and superstars. Sometimes a guy may lose his weight, may lose his confidence. But when Tom Brady's in the building, somehow, some way, he's like next man up. And I believe in you, so you should believe in yourself. Acho, I got to push back a little bit about out of character. Uh, Devontae Adams had 67 receiving yards yesterday. He averages 98. That's out of character. Aaron Jones had 27 rushing yards yesterday. He yeah. averages 79. Pop, pop. Them pads will make you get out of character and change your name and sit on the sideline. So when I look at a Bucks team, first wild card team in 10 years to advance to the Super Bowl, only four teams in history before the Bucks have won three straight road games on the way to the Super Bowl. And on the way to the Super Bowl, y'all, he didn't take the alley. He didn't take the back streets. He said, hey, Drew Brees, what it do? And then he said, Aaron Rodgers, what up? I mean, this dude is right down Broadway flossing. And it ain't going to stop. We'll see in two weeks. It's on.